This is Ramalinga Prasad Kuppa. Welcome to my channel, Pharma World. Topic of the day is Manufacturing Process Validations, a Comprehensive Insight. Process Validation The process validation is considered as complete only when the following are complete. Process Equipment Qualification, Production Validation, Cleaning Validation, Analytical Method Validation, and Revalidation. Let us understand Validation. Validation is a documented evidence that when the process is adopted, the output will be consistent, repeatable, and yields the same results any time and every time. This is the simple definition of validation. Here, process validation means you have to understand as manufacturing process validation. By now, all of us know what is the definition of manufacturing. For recollecting again, you may refer the section 20 glossary of ICH Q7. Process validation should be looked into as a comprehensive broader area activity. So it should include the following. Process equipment have to be qualified for design, installation, operation and performance in the required range of conditions. This is a different subject and not in the scope of this video. But one point to note is that the qualification must be done in a sequence. First, the design qualification has to be completed and the document signed off, followed by installation, operation and performance qualifications. Production validation is the product preparation exercise. It may have several stages and all stages have to be completed successfully. It should be documented in entirety and signed off. Cleaning validation means cleaning validation of process equipment cleaning. This is not a separate activity. Unless the cleaning validation is annexed to the production validation, it becomes incomplete. Analytical method validation is very important to establish that the test method used to evaluate the product gives the results consistently and accurately. Here one important point to note is that while carrying out the cleaning validation, it is necessary to carry out the rinse and swab analysis of the equipment to estimate the trace amounts of the remnants of the previous product at a very, very low quantity. So it should address the detection limit and the quantitation limit for wash water testing in the cleaning validations. Revalidation is with reference to the product life cycle approach. So only the combination of all these aspects is considered as process validation. Let us understand the product life cycle approach of process validations. Validations on three consecutive batches was earlier accepted concept. It is only three consecutive batches were used to be taken for validations earlier. Statistically, selection of three consecutive batches may be adequate to establish the consistency of the process. This strategy was accepted earlier. Validation with a product life cycle approach is the current thinking. So validation activities with a product life cycle concept is very effective way of validating the process. Then what is the product life cycle approach? An approach which includes process design, process qualification and continued process verification are the three stages of process validation for the product life cycle concept. This approach includes requirements of other guidelines ICH Q8, Q9 and Q10. Process design goal is to develop a firm process 
suitable for routine commercial manufacturing that can consistently deliver the product that meets the quality attributes. The process design is well studied and established with data from variety of design of experiments. This is done at R&D or development stage. In process qualification, it is aimed at establishing the capability of commercial manufacturing for reproducible outputs. This step is necessary before commercial distribution. In the third stage, continued process verification is done. If you notice, there is a separate terminology used. Process verification. Verification means it is a limited validation. If there are any changes to the process, equipment, methods, materials, verification has to be carried out with main focus on the change and confirm that there are no other adverse quality issues on the product. So for this approach, how many batches can be considered for validation? Minimum is three anyway. More the number, more the data, better the evaluation and better are the controls. So you can consider a campaign of batches, which is more than three. So all these things should be CGMP compliant procedures. The approach includes all features of ISH guidelines Q8, Q9 and Q10. For more details, you can read and understand the intent of guidance for industry, process validation, general principles and practices dated January 2011. To recoup the information, we understand process design is a very important first step. The process has to be firmed up with statistically evaluated data from development stage and scale up stage. We also understand that process qualification is a confirmation of the first step in commercial manufacturing in large scale. Further, continued process verification is a continual plan. This will establish the ongoing assurance on the continued validated state of control of the process. So this ongoing plan will be, will be with a focus on product life cycle. Let us understand what is a prospective validation. It is an exercise aimed at before the product is being marketed. It is the preferred approach. In this approach, all the aspects of qualifications and various validations described above, which are part of the process validation, have to be established. Necessary long-term stability data for at least 12-month period is required for assigning the retest or shelf life. For any new product, prospective validation should be only the approach. There are limitations for carrying out concurrent validation. New product means when the product is launched at your site first time. It may be a product already marketed. As far as you are concerned, it is considered as a new product for your site. As you can see, you need at least 12 month evaluated stability data on long term conditions to submit to the regulatory agencies for approval. Since the evaluation of shelf life is carried out with the support of data from accelerated study, it should be understood that accelerated study is also a part of the program. When once the evaluated entire data is available, the batches have to be marketed. This is the sequence of activities while carrying out the prospective validation. After that, continuous large scale production should commence only after complete documenting the information and approved by 
quality units. Let us understand the intent of concurrent validation. By definition, process validation has to be carried out from the data from various batches. Statistically, data from three batches is minimum requirement for evaluation. Then what is concurrent validation? See, there are limitations and conditions for carrying out concurrent process validation. You have to understand the conditions carefully. For example, for validations, statistical data evaluation should be done. For statistical evaluation, we know that at least data from three consecutive batches is available. So when there are limited number of batches, say one batch, infrequently manufactured because of lower demand, concurrent validation may be considered. When there are limited number of batches, maybe one, you need to carry out extensive controls and additional testing to establish the quality and safety of the product. With this data, you can make a commitment to carry out the concurrent validation for the next batch whenever manufactured. For concurrent validations, quality risk management Q9 has to be extensively adopted to mitigate any potential risk at any stage of manufacturing. So based on the documented evidence and data on extensive testing that the ex existing process yield suitable quality of the product, concurrent validation may be appropriate. In such rare cases only, the concurrent validation must be considered. Understand the requirement for retrospective validation. This validation is carried out in rare circumstances where a large number of data, at least the data from 30 batches is available. The data when evaluated statistically establishes that the process yields consistent quality product repeatedly. Retrospective validation may be appropriate in such cases. This approach is useful for a product that is being manufactured since several years and a large amount of evaluated data is available. So more the number of batches, more the data, better are the results and better are the controls. Though the guideline prescribes a minimum of 30 batch data, it is recommended to consider the entire available data for the period considered for retrospective validation. Also, revalidation is done when there is any change as recommended to mitigate any risk identified during the evaluation of the previous available data. When there is no change at all whatsoever, it is necessary to document that the data is reviewed with a definite frequency and confirmed that the process is under control. In such cases, revalidation is not necessary because the process is under validated state as established by the review of the evaluated data. I hope that, that the information on exact understanding of process validation and its components and understand, uh, understanding on various types of validations. Try to review your system and incorporate these recommendations. Thank you. Thanks for watching. For more videos, please do subscribe, like and share. Thank you.